about pistons, and there's many types of pistons, many different alloys, uh, many aspects of pistons. There's domed and dished and big ones and little ones. I mean, you name it. So we're going to kind of cover all those in here. Now, first thing to know, all pistons are aluminum. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some type of motors out there and some sort of uh, internal combustion engines that have some pistons not made of aluminum. I don't know what they would be, but all the cars out there and all the performance cars and stuff, they're all aluminum. It's kind of interesting because sometimes you'll see a, a guy selling a, an engine and then the ad will say, oh, aluminum pistons. It's like, hello, they're all aluminum. So uh, we're going to kind of go down a line here and just show you all the different ones. We're going to start with the least uh, uh, one and then go right on up to the most expensive and most strong one. So the first one right here is just a stock cast piston. This is what comes in mom's uh, sedan or, or dad's truck or whatever. This is a flat top. That means the whole top area of the, uh, the surface of the piston is just completely flat. This has four valve reliefs. These are the valve reliefs up here. And of course, you can see one's a little bit larger than this one. And that's where the intake valve would be, and this is where the exhaust valve would be. Um, and of course, you see them on the bottom side too, and you're like, well, what is this, four valve per cylinder? No, it just means the manufacturer can make one piston to go two different ways. On one side of the engine, it would be this way. On the other side of the engine, it would go this way because pistons are directional. We'll get into that a little bit uh, later when I talk about wrist pins and stuff. But basic features that all pistons have, obviously, is the top. Um, they have the sides, which are called the skirts. This is the skirt area. They have the wrist pin. That's what goes here and connects on the connecting rod. They have ring grooves, or what they call ring lands, or ring grooves. And these are where the, the rings go, which actually seals the piston and the cylinder. Because mind you, the piston's a little bit smaller than the cylinder. Average piston has, like a stock piston like this, has about, oh, a thousandth and a half clearance, one to two thousandths clearance right in there on a stock engine. When you get up into race engines, because race engines make more cylinder pressure and more heat, the metal expands. So it has to have a place to go, so we allow more clearance. And horsepower makes heat, so the higher the horsepower number, the more clearance we have in between the piston and the cylinder wall. Sometimes that clearance on, on big race motors, six, seven thousandth, something like that, on really high-end motors, pro mod motors, stuff like that, oh yeah, there's seven or eight thousandths or so because you've got so much nitrous or so much blower boost going in there and so much fuel, that piston, as you heat it up, expands, has to have a place to go, so we need more, more clearance. So the clearance is between the skirt and the cylinder wall. Now, cast pistons, uh, also, when they're really cheap cast pistons, just your stock, low-of-the-line pistons, they're not very strong. And the way you can tell a cast piston, several ways, but one way is, if you look down inside here, you can actually see there's steel plates put in here. Those steel plates are put in there to help strengthen the piston underneath or around the wrist pin. So the wrist pin, when the piston hits top dead center, the piston will go up, hit top dead center, and on the exhaust stroke, as it pushes the exhaust out and it turns around and goes back down to, to suck in the new intake charge, there's a lot of load underneath this wrist pin right here. Well, cast pistons, stock cast pistons are not very strong, and you want to be careful to not rip that wrist pin out of the bottom. So they insert these little steel plates in here to help strengthen the piston. Okay, that's just because the alloy is not the greatest in the world. Now the next one up from a cast piston is still a cast piston, but it's a high silicon uh, content. And silicon is, is basically you have all the molecules of aluminum. And then what they'll do is they'll add silicon to it, not silicone, not the stuff we use for gasket sealers, silicon. And what it does is it acts kind of as a buffer between all the aluminum molecules. And actually, as it's going up and down the cylinder walls, it kind of gives it a better anti-galling uh, properties to it. This next alloy here is called a hyper-eutectic, high silicon, hyper-eutectic piston. Let's all say that together, hyper-eutectic, okay? <laughs> so uh, a lot of people mispronounce that word. It's, it is a long, funny word. Uh, but hyper eutectic piston, they call them an H series piston, H for hyper eutectic, is just a better alloy. And you'll see these types of pistons in a lot of performance motors. Um, unfortunately, I see pistons like this in some motors that shouldn't really have them, like supercharged applications or nitrous applications. There are some manufacturers out there that say these are perfectly fine for that. They obviously don't build motors because I wouldn't put one of those in, in nitrous or supercharged. You're going to break it. The cast pistons, the alloys are brittle and they tend to crumble or break much easier than a forged piston. So this is still a cast piston. So hyper eutectics are a cast piston. They're just stronger than a stock cast piston just because of the alloy. But we're going to go over the same features. Again, this has four valve reliefs. And if you look on the top, there's a little dimple right here. That just means the direction of the piston. So that means that points towards the front of the motor. So obviously if the front of the motor is over here, 
this would point towards that on this bank. And on this bank on the opposite side, it would have to also point that way. You don't want to put the piston in this way. The reason they do that is because the wrist pins are not centered on these. They're a little offset. Stock pistons, the wrist pin is not centered. Race pistons, the piston is centered. And the reason they do this on stock pistons is they offset the wrist pin. That actually helps. We talked about rod angles. Longer rods uh, make a better rod angle. Well, you can kind of fool the rod angle by moving the wrist pin over, and it helps the piston push, it helps their connecting rod push the piston up the cylinder better rather than out the side. So the factory pistons are actually moved in a little bit. So the more features of this thing are a better alloy. If you look at the ring lands, if you look at this too, there's a